today, I think the most defining win happened down in Jordan Hare, Penn State 41, Auburn 12. Just speaks volumes here. A couple quick notes before we I throw this to you guys. First, it was the worst home loss for an Auburn team since 1984. Oh. Penn State went down south to an undefeated SEC heavyweight and outrushed them by 200 yards. That same Penn State team started the season out unranked. Christian Hackenberg will go to you. They're your boys. Mm -hmm. This is your alma mater. What jumped out? What were you the most surprised by or proud of? Like, Just what was your biggest takeaways watching Yeah, uh, just a complete knockout? Yeah, I think a lot of it kind of went back to my toast. You know, I, I think Penn State, one of the things I noted was that they came into this game and really this season with expectations, to your point, that they haven't had uh, to live up to, right? They, they kind of were the under-promise, over-deliver guys. They had a great chance to do that this year, and they've done that up until this point. Great tough road test against Purdue to open the season up on Thursday night, went home, handled business against Ohio like they were supposed to, and then kind of had this one circled to really find out what this Penn State team was about. Um, the one thing I've been consistently struggling with is, is their identity offensively. They've had a lot of change in, in offensive coordinators over the past five, six years. This is Yersich's second year. Last year, I thought they were kind of gimmicky with some things. They did some things well, but, you know, at the end of the day, when once Clifford went down, it became really even more gimmicky to me. Um, they showed that they have the toughness and the ability to run the football. And whether that be a huge shift up front or the fact that they got Nick Singleton in the backfield right now or mm -hmm. a combination of the both, it doesn't matter. That is going to be Sean Clifford's best friend because the point I touched on Thursday night was that I, I, I don't think Clifford's a guy that's going to go out and win you ball games consistently, but he's going to be a guy who is never going to put you in bad situations. And if he does, he'll figure out a way to, to recoup that. And when you give him a weapon like a run game, it completely changes the dynamic of the type of quarterback he can be in the ceiling that he has within that offense. So if they can keep this up, uh, they could definitely, I think, be a dark horse in the East, especially with what we've seen with Michigan state um, and their schedule plays out really well. And we're going to find out in a quick bunch because they have, I think central Michigan at home. They have one more. I think they play Northwestern. Then they have a bye week and then they have Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio state. So, during that stretch right there, we're going to find out what Penn State is, is all about. And I think up to this point, they've been building properly. Um, and I, I, I just think they're really poised. I think the defense has came out, flown around. Uh, Manny Diaz has put a different emphasis on turnovers. They got to the quarterback this year. They turned their, this today. They, they turned the football over. So they're in a really good position. It's just, um, you know, they need to keep building and keep finding exactly who they're going to be, have some guys step up on the outside and, 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 and rely on that run game. That run game, Bryce Petty was vicious out gaining Auburn by 200 yards breakout freshman, true freshman. We just talked about it. This kid was in the prom last year and now he's running yeah. all over Auburn. Penn state has an identity or they are shaping themselves into one. A lot of teams are still trying to find one Bryce like all you guys have played and played at incredibly high levels. How, how much of a, of a, of a confidence booster is it to walk out onto the field, knowing you're going to attack what you're going to attack, but the run game right in front of me is going to do what they do A defense like Penn States with two big physical corners, a front seven that won't yield shit. And all I got to do is just go out here and then control the game. Forget managing. I can control the game. Sean Clifford is in his fifth year, fourth year starting plus COVID. Um, like Bryce, like what did you take away from that? And and they really are a complete ball club. Am I right on that? Yeah, no, no, no. That's actually you took the words out of my mouth. And it, and I and I think that what what's interesting about the quarterback position in today's game, there's so much hype around if your quarterback's not a guy that can win you games bar none by himself, he's not a guy, he's not a right. dude. Right. And, right. and to hack's right. point, I think it was such a great point to make because, and to even piggyback off of, well, off of what you said, Sean Clifford's got a ton of starts under his belt. There's a lot of different ways to win games and then to staple your team as a complete club. That is what you want. You want to 
to take the first three games of the season, knock the rust off, not, you know, get, get in game shape in a way that says, man, we can play 60 minutes with anybody, no matter what the game gives us. And I think it was really interesting today on a couple different facets, um, not only just in this game, but even what Dan Lanning did with, with Bo Nix and Oregon, they ran it 40 plus times today and got a big win. You do not have to put 40, you know, pass attempts on your guy until he's ready. And I think that's what we've really seen with Stetson Bennett and his maturity process. What they did last year, what Kirby Smart did with him last year, they handed the ball off left and right and Stetson got him out of plays when they needed to. And now he is the bell cow in that offense. You can win in a multitude of different ways, but I think there's too much pressure right now on the hype of a quarterback, even coming out of high school, going to the league as well, that they have to be a do-it-all guy. When you have a guy like 10 or Nick Singleton in the backfield, buddy, hand it to him all mm-hmm. game long mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. and just play with the chains. And, and to your point, I love what you said, you know, screw the managing game. Like, that's not what that is. Controlling the game and being in front of the sticks is how you win ball games. And so that was as a quarterback and 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 a, just a fan of college football, that was, a, that was a fantastic game to watch from a Penn State side of things. Auburn, a whole different story. They're gonna have to find some things at War Eagle. But uh, to your point, man, it gives it gives me um, the, all the confidence in the world that we can go the distance. Mm. You said we like you, as in we are Penn State, like, like you. Oh, you're on I, that. I, you got I yourself feel, a ticket like already, it. huh? I, I like I like the ticker that we are. It just feels good. You know, yeah, I, I like a tribe. I like it. It tribe. does. <laughs> it does feel good. Trevor Knight, your your feel good moment about this this performance on either side. We we've been real Penn State heavy on it, but your feel good moment on either side of today's heavyweight deal down there was was what? Yeah, I'll, I'll say two things. Number one, my first road SEC game um, when I went down to AM was at Jordan Hare uh, at Auburn. It's a great place to play. One of my favorite places that I ever played. Great student section, um, all of those things. That being said, tough place to play. And mm-hmm. so to see Penn State go down there and push those guys around what was impressive. Um, that being said, I'll, I'll, I'll peel back the layers a few, a few years. You know, I think as we watch as as college football fans and now even NFL fans, we see the game changing. We see quarterbacks that are running more. We see quarterbacks that are much shorter. We see offenses that aren't just line up and pound you in the mouth for a couple yards, you know, a pop. We want to see big plays and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, the rules of football are still very simple and very the, very the same. Ten yards for a first down and you're trying to score touchdowns. So if you can hand the ball off, and this is one of Hack's favorite things to say, and get three and a half yards of carry, do that until you can't anymore. And I think that is some of the identity that Penn State says, hey, let's let's go into this game. And yeah, we've got some guys that can make some plays, but at the end of the day, we're still going to pound the rock, and we're going to get three and a half yards of carry, and we're going to put it right down your throat. And uh, it's still football. Got to get the ball in the end zone. So not overcomplicating it, but getting the great win um, for Penn State was pretty cool. Full transparency. After every Penn State win, and I've done this for years now, I text Coach uh, Franklin this Muhammad Ali knockout meme. And I text him that. And then tonight I texted him all caps, body blows. And I put on there that O-line, all exclamation points. And he texted back, thanks. Very tough place to come get a win in all caps. Uh, Coach Franklin on on their game tonight, that was Penn State 41-12. Big knockout, big defining knockout. Curious is where they go now in the rankings. You know it's going to be... how far do you guys think this is going to go? Where will they wind up, Hack, in your opinion, real quick? Like I said, I think that meat of the schedule is going to going to determine, but I think that they're definitely tooled to survive that meat of their schedule. No, no, no. Um, I mean, ranking tomorrow, come oh, Sunday. Oh, where will they go? Oh, I got you. I got you. How high up will this I take? I mean, they got, they got to – if they're not top 10, you know, 11, 12, somewhere in there, I think it's going to be a comfortable ranking. But they definitely got to jump from that 22 spot. Bryce? That was my, I mean, mid, mid teens. Auburn looked really bad. Auburn looked bad. <laughs> Trevor. Yeah, I, I think Hack's right. I mean, it's, I think it's comfortable. Don't, don't throw them up there to put all the pressure on them. Like we talked about before. Um, still got a, a, a lot of teeth to go through in the, in the East there uh, in a the lot. big 10, but um, 
you know, early on in the season, get them up there and get them some confidence. And that, like Tack said, they could be a dark horse. They've got all the keys to the to the castle and the and the pieces of the puzzle. And I think Indeed. the other thing too is though with that is that I mean, again, this team was ranked fourth headed into the Iowa game last year. So they've had right. they, yep. they understand the expectations and Good with point. the senior leadership, PJ Mustafer, Sean, like they they get that. So I, I wherever and they land, probably, I don't think it's gonna matter. Um, they don't care. They don't care. They don't yeah. care. Because they got Michigan and Ohio State. Yep. They don't Correct. Care. Like they, they know who they're gonna be. Time. Yep. And you you're really talking about three of the best football teams and no matter where they land, three of the best football teams in America live in the same neighborhood in the same conference in the Buckeyes, Wolverines, and Penn State. So Penn State knocks out Auburn 41-12, worst loss by an Auburn team at home since 1984. What's going on, guys? Rob Doster here, the founder of the Field of 68 and the Field of 12 Media Networks. I wanted to take a quick minute to let you guys know about an exciting new project that we have been working on for the last three months. The Almanac, an all-encompassing preview of the 2022-23 college basketball season. We spoke with every single Division I head coach to give you a robust and accurate preview for all 363 Division I college basketball teams. We have predictions for conference finishes for all 32 leagues. We have features on the best freshmen, the best big men, the breakout stars, the coaches on the hot seat, so much more. It is 600,000 words of sheer happiness for the college basketball fan in your life. The Almanac is going to be available for digital purchase on September 26th for just $19.99, but you can pre-order it today using the promo code HOOPS and save 20%. Just hit the link in the description below.